Hello everyone, my name is Mijin Bay and I am here to discuss to you the elaboration likelihood model by Richard Petty and John Kakupo. Before anything, let's start with a short story. Matthew and Melody went on a date at a Chinese restaurant near their neighborhood. Matthew has never had Chinese food before, but his date was craving some, so he went along with her. As they were handed the menus, Melody looked carefully at the options available and picked her meal. Matthew didn't recognize any of the food in the menu, but he didn't want to look foolish in front of his date, so he said the only thing that can save him from this situation. I'll have what she's having, please. So here is our activity for this lesson. Your task is to point out which of the two characters were using the central root and the peripheral root. The first person who gives the correct answer wins a 20 pesos worth of load. You can just PM me the answer or just send it to the GC. And with that, let us now start our discussion. The central and peripheral roots to persuasion. Before our discussion, I have a question for you. What do you think is the most effective persuasive strategy? A, presenting well-reasoned arguments, or B, lining up highly credible people to endorse your proposal. If you're not sure which of them is the most effective, then don't worry, Mr. Petty might just have the answer we need. Richard Petty is an Ohio State psychologist. He conducted his PhD dissertation study using the topic of teenage driving to test the relative effectiveness of strong message arguments and high source credibility. His study revealed that the effectiveness of these arguments and credibility depends on the mental route to which the listener uses when they are presented with a proposal for change. Now, there are two types of cognitive processes, the central route and the peripheral route. The central route is the path of cognitive processing that involves analyzing the content of a message. It involves message elaboration. Now, what is elaboration? Elaboration is the extent to which a person carefully thinks about the issue-relevant arguments contained in a persuasive communication. In contrast to this, the peripheral route offers a mental shortcut to accepting or rejecting a message without any active thinking about the attributes of the issue or object of consideration. So you see, with the central route, there is active thinking involved, while with the peripheral route, there is only reliance to the cognitive cues that will help them make quick decisions. Now, what are these cognitive cues? Robert Cialdini of Arizona State University lists the six cues that trigger a click and rear program response. So first is reciprocation, second is consistency, third is social proof, fourth is liking, fifth is authority, and last but not the least, scarcity. To further examine the central and peripheral route, please take a look at the simplified version of the elaboration likelihood model. Now let's start with the central route. The central route has four steps, and to better understand these steps, I will summarize it by providing each step with a question. The four questions are as follows. First, do you have enough interest or motivation to analyze the message? Second, are you able to process the message? Third, how are you going to analyze the message? And finally, are you in favor of the message or not? So that's the process of the central route. Now look here in the peripheral, peripheral route. You can see that there is no motivation or ability to process the message at all. So the listeners relied on peripheral cues to make a quick yes or no decision without having to think about the message at all. So kung bisihan pa rin na to guys, if mo persuade ka og usa ka tawo, nasa lay duha ka reaction na na. Sa central route, ang mga tawo kay interesado maminaw sa kung unsa imong maingon. Sa peripheral route, mas mo focus sila sa mga outside factors like kung unsay ilang makuha kung mo agree sila nimo, unsay reaction sa uban nga mga tawo nga nakadumog sa imong message, mga ingana. Okay, moving on. Let's now further discuss the central route. First step, motivation for elaboration. Is it worth the effort? Pete and Kakipo stated that people aren't always logical, but we make a good effort to not kid ourselves in search for the truth. But a person can only take so much before they shut down. If we let ourselves examine every single message or idea we heard or read about, we would experience a massive information overload. Thus, our only way to solve this problem is by being lazy toward most issues in life. Matod pa ni Pete and Kakupo na ito mga mental filter sa atong utok wherein i-disregard na ito ang mga topics nga dili na importante para nato o ang magpabilin na rin ito 
kay agatur ang mga topics nga interesado ta o relevant nato. In the terminology of social judgment theory, we are motivated to elaborate only ideas with which we are highly ego involved. Otherwise, the person will more likely follow the peripheral route and settle on credibility cues. But there are also other people who listen despite the topic not being of relevance to them. These people just want to satisfy their need for cognitive clarity, regardless of the issue. The two theories recognize these types of people and develop a need for cognition skill to identify individuals who are most likely to carefully consider message arguments. Now, if you find you agree with the first two statements and disagree with the others, Petty Kakyupom would anticipate that you'd be a person who works through many of the ideas and arguments you hear. Now, on to the next slide. Ability for elaboration. Can they do it? Once people have shown an interest in thinking about the content of a message, the next issue is whether they are able to do so. Issue-relevant thinking takes more than just intelligence. It also requires concentration. Distraction disrupts elaboration. If there are other factors that are affecting the thinking process of the listeners, like they don't have enough knowledge about the topic or there is too much noise in the environment, they will find a hard time concentrating on your message. And because of this, the listeners would more likely give up and just switch to the parallel route and judge your message based on cues, just to get it over with. Now onto our next slide, which is type of elaboration, objective versus biased thinking. So now we're going to answer the question as to how you're going to process the message. Patty and Kakupo believe that motivation and ability strongly increase the likelihood that a message will be elaborated in the minds of listeners. However, as social judgment theory suggests, they may not process the information in a fair and objective manner. This is where the bias elaboration comes in. Bias elaboration is a top-down thinking in which a predetermined conclusion colors the supporting data underneath, meaning these biased thinkers already have an opinion or previous idea about the topic, and you would hold on to that opinion of theirs despite being presented with the facts. This type of objective elaboration contrasts with objective elaboration or bottom-up thinking, which lets facts speak for themselves. If the thinker already has a set of beliefs to contemplate, Petty and Kakipu's research shows that additional thought will, all, will merely fix them in stone. So the only way that you might have a chance to change this line of thought is through strong arguments. Last step for central root. Elaborated arguments, strong, weak, or neutral. According to Petty and Kakupo, wala ang absolute nga standard para ma-determine kung ang message kay logical ba or baseless. The only way para makaingon ka nga strong ang usa ka argument is whether or not ma-convince ni mo ang mga audience nga musay ni mo or mo accept sa imong idea. According to ELM, the enhanced thinking of those who respond preferably will cause their change in position to persist over time, resist counter-persuasion, and predict future behavior, the triple crown of interpersonal influence. Meaning, dili na sila basta-basta nga mo change sa ilang mind once nga makonvinsi na ni mo na sila sa imong idea. This is also the same with those who responded unfavorably. If they are presented with a weak argument, it will give them more reasons to be against your proposal and no amount of convincing can change their mind. If your arguments are also too neutral, you won't inspire any change of heart or attitude. So I have a video here that gives a close representation of a conversation between an elaborated thinker and a persuader. It's called a hedge. And it is not to be feared, my amphibious friend. It is the gateway to the good life. Uh, I'm a reptile actually. But, you know, it's a common mistake, and, uh, you are... Oh, where are my manners? I'm RJ. Now, please don't think I'm prying, but I couldn't help overhearing, and I think I can shed a little light on what this whole hedge situation is about. You see, what was once mere wilderness is now 54 acres of man-made, manicured, air-conditioned paradise. Except for that little bitty speck. You are here. <gasps> no, no, that's a good thing. You're hibernators, right? You gather up a bunch of food, store it away for the winter? Uh-huh! We fill the log! Hammy. Really? This log? This cave-like log? All the way to the top. Ozzy? Let me ask you, how long does it take, you know, 
to fill the log. 274 days. Oh! Ever done it in a week? That's impossible. Not if we work together. You see, you've got the food gathering skills, I've got the know-how, and they have the food. How much food? Loads of food. Heaps of food. Food out the wazoo! Well, you know, whatever kind of food comes out of a wazoo, I, I really don't think we're interested in eating. I don't know. The guy's making a lot of sense to me. I think we should listen. Well, yeah, I'm okay with wazoo food there. No, you're not. The tail is tingling. Oh, oh. Well, well, hold on, hold on. The what is what? When something doesn't feel right, my tail tingles. And let me tell you something. Everything you've said so far is driving my tail crazy. Listen, Vern, right? This isn't something you need to be afraid of. Well, I am. And for good reason. Oh, this well. is not a birthmark. Ah, that's because you went over there without a guide, Vern. Whatever. Thanks for stopping by. We're not interested. Not interested in the most delicious food you've ever tasted? No! Come on! Not interested. Okay. I get it. I understand. This is something that you're just not open to. What is that? That, my friend, is a magical combination of corn flour, dehydrated cheese solids, BHA, BHT, and good old MSG, AKA the chips. Nacho cheese flavor. More rice! More. Yeah, Bird! Those were good! It's all good! And we're going over there! Tonight! Yeah! So now we are done with the central route. Let us now discuss the peripheral cues. So there are four sentences here that you might be familiar with. These sentences that you see here are told by people who rely more on peripheral cues. Now, notice that there is no mention what they think about the message at all. Just quick and shallow decisions based on cues. Signposts along the way direct the hearer to favor or oppose the persuader's point of view without ever engaging in what Petty and Kakupo call issue-relevant thinking. As explained earlier, the hearer who uses the peripheral route relies on the variety of cues as an aid in reaching a quick decision. The most obvious cues are tangible rewards linked to agreement with the advocate's position. Food, sex, and money are traditional inducements to change. In simpler terms, you are bribing the people to support your cause. The other most interesting cue on the peripheral route is the source credibility. People who respond with this cue will judge the credibility of the message based on who is the source or the speaker. Now, Please note guys, even if na attitude change sa kaninga route, dili siya permanente. Like, wala na siya backbone. So, kana nga change karon, mere spark ro na si ja. Once nga mawala na gani na nga spark, oh, back to the old ways na sad. Payas ka sa previous school na ho. Na daw may grade basta muatin may og Sunday's mass. So, syempre, perfect attendance may atong nga month. Pagka next month ato, kay dili naman compulsory ang pag-attend. So, Wala na po yung attend na mo. Guess mo? Kahit tungod wala na may hing motivate na mo para mag Sunday's Mass, edi wala na po yung add to. Mauna ka week ang attitude change sa peripheral route. Despite this though, there is still an advantage to the peripheral route. If done correctly, you can use this track to inspire or encourage other people to join your cause. This advantage will be further discussed in the next topic by my partner Brooklyn Bergado. Now let's proceed to the next topic, pushing the limits of peripheral power. There are lots of peripheral cues that a person could use in order to change the receiver's attitude. So what do you think these peripheral cues are? This includes speaker's credibility, reaction of others, and if the speaker offers a reward. Herein, speaker's credibility is, de is defined as audience perception of the message source's expertise, character, and dynamism, which is typically, of course, a peripheral cue. Now, let's dive into the sample situation provided by the book. This is basically about Magic Johnson, a former professional basketball player. And this situation centers or highlights the speaker's credibility and character. So let's start. In 1991, basketball superstar Magic Johnson held a press conference to announce that he had tested positive for HIV. At the time, such a diagnosis seemed like a death sentence. 
By then, University of South Florida psychologists Louis Penner and Barbara Fritsch had just completed a study showing that many people had a little sympathy for AIDS victims who contracted the disease through sexual transmission. When students are asked to volunteer a few hours to help a patient stay in school, more than half of the women and none of the men in the study volunteered. Penner and Barbara then extended their study when they heard the superstar's illness. They wondered if situations such as Johnson's and his pledge to become an advocate for those with the disease would ever cause the students to react posit positively towards people with AIDS. Just a week after Johnson's announcement, 80% of the men in the study offered assistance. However, that, that number tapered off to 30% within a few months. The proportion of women helping dipped below 40% in the same period. They've observed that the people didn't grapple with the substance of Johnson's message, rather they paid attention to the man presenting it. With that being said, Penner and Fritch's study of Johnson's announcement clearly suggests that the effect of powerful peripheral cues is short-lived. They concluded that changes that occur because of the peripheral cues, such as being a well-liked celebrity, are less permanent than, than that those occur because of the sub substantive content of the persuasion attempt. Now, going back to the identified cues in the peripheral route, Petty and Kashupo emphasize that it is impossible to compile a list of cues that are strictly peripheral. For example, a persuader would have to consider the multiple roles that the mood of the person can play in an attempt to persuade. Suppose that you are proposing something relevant to someone and that person is in a good mood or he's having a good feeling. Well, they say good mood or good feeling enhances persuasion. Sometimes when a person is happy or in, a, in an upbeat mood, he tends to make impulsive decisions, which goes with the saying, do not make decisions when you are happy. Going back, when talking to a person in a pleasant mood, with a pleasant mood I mean, there's a possibility that that person would process your message without thinking too hard, thereby using the peripheral route. However, when that person is somehow willing to work through your proposal, his bright mood might turn out to be a disadvantage. When his mood is altered by processing through that information you've shared, there's a possibility that that altered feeling could bias him against your argument. Now, it is safe to conclude that many variables such as perceived credibility or the mood of the listener can act as peripheral cues. And there is no variable that's always a shortcut on the peripheral route. Choosing a route, practical advice for the per persuader. Petty and Kashupo states that a persuader or a speaker needs to determine the likelihood that listeners will give their attention and evaluate a proposal. And if the speaker determines that his or her listeners have the motivation and have the ability to elaborate a message, the speaker should come with facts and figures to support his or her case rather than using emotional appeal. So even if the listeners use central route, the speaker still needs to build a compelling persuasive case to prevent the listeners from changing their attitude to an antagonistic position. On the other hand, if the listeners seem to be unwilling or unable to elaborate a message, then the speaker would be more success successful by choosing a delivery strat strategy that emphasizes the package rather than the contents. This includes building friendships with a listener, using emotional appeals, and etc. Ethical reflection, Nielsen's significant choice. Elaboration likelihood model describes persuasion that it's that's effective. However, University of Washington Professor Emeritus Thomas Nielsen is concerned with what's ethical. He proposes that persuasive speech is ethical to the extent that it maximizes people's ability to exercise free choice. Meaning, his concept of significant choice is defined as choice making that is voluntary and free from a, either physical or mental coercion. That being said, the listener's decision that has to be made must be based from the information presented by the speaker. Philosophers and rhetoricians have compared persuasion to a lover making fer fervent appeal to his beloved. 
Nielsen's ethic of significant choice resembles particular aspects of courtship analogy. So the following are examples of typology of an ethic lovers. So number one is smother lovers won't take no for an answer. Therefore, their persistence is obnoxious. Legalistic lovers have set image of what the others should be. Flirts are in love with love. They value response, not the other person. Seducers try deception and flattery to entice the other to submit, while rapists use force of threats, guilt, or conformity pressure to have their way. Now, the implication of Nielsen's concept of significant choice is that a persuasion is considered unethical if it is for the purpose of personal gain at the expense of others or for personal gain without the knowledge of the audience. Nielsen would, would approve of persuasive appeals that encourage message elaboration through ELM's central route but might not approve of emotional appeal. Critic, critic elaborating the model. Elaboration likelihood model has been a leading theory of persuasion and attitude change for the last 20 years and it has been very influential. Betty and Estupo have elaborated ELM to make it more complex, less predictive, and less practical, which makes it problematic as a scientific theory. Paul Mojo, a communication researcher of Miami University with communication consultant James Tiff, charged that ELM descriptions are sufficiently imprecise and ambiguous that it cannot be adequately tested and falsified, particularly in terms of what makes an argument strong or weak. Now, Petty and Kashupo define a good message as one containing argument such that when subjects are instructed to think about the message, the thoughts they genera generate are fundamentally favorable. In other words, an argument is regarded as strong if the people are persuaded, and conversely, an argument is considered as weak if the people are turned off. Despite the limitations, the ambiguity, and the contradictions, the theory combined many diverse aspects of persuasion that are pulled together into a unified whole, making it a valuable theory of influence. And that ends our discussion. Thank you for listening and have a good day.